Hey there. In this video, I want to introduce an entirely new SQL concept. It's very useful, and some of you may find it more readily understandable than the join technique that we've covered previously for contending with queries that require information from multiple tables. And in most circumstances, the concept that we're going over now, which is called nested select statements, can be used interchangeably with the join technique. Now the join's a really important concept that really uh, a less than thoroughgoing understanding of joins will compromise your ability to get relational database management systems. But if you're struggling with the join technique, uh, the nested select statement may be easier to use. And there are certain circumstances where this is really the only mechanism to get readily and in a single statement at the crux of your query. So uh, first thing we want to do before we jump right into nested select is review the join because I'm going to introduce nested select statements as an alternative to the join. So uh, same example as last time, we are interested in getting the title history from a given employee. We want Randy Sire's title history, what the history of her titles have been over the course of her tenure at our company. And so to do that, we are going to look at the employee table. And there's the employee table because that has the information about employee name. And that's where we can find first name and last name, Randy Sire, respectively. And we are going to look at title because the title table contains the title names, the from dates, and the to dates. So we have a situation once again, and we've seen this in the previous video, but it's probably worth going over again, where we need information from multiple tables. So let's take a look. We want select title and from date and to date. That's the information we're interested in, the title and when the when Randy had it. That information is all in title, but the title alone does not get the job done because title does not contain first name or last name, employee does. So we're going to have to get in the employee table in on the action. And whenever we have two tables, we need a join condition to get that information meaningfully reunited across those two tables. And we need to do that on the basis of a primary key foreign key relationship. The shared attribute here is employee number. There's employee number there and there's employee number there. And so what we need to do in our join condition is specify the conditions where the join makes sense, which is where the employee number is the same. So we will say when em or I'm sorry, not when, good heavens, I got my wrong um, question word, where employee dot employee number is equal to title dot employee number. And if we stop here, we will get the entire company. We're not interested in the entire company. We want just Randy Sires. So we have and condition in our where we have another condition and here's where employee comes in we want the last name equal to sire and let's make that capital and the first name equal to randy okay and so now we've got our join condition where which is employees amp number equals titles amp number and we're going to limit that to just employees with the first name of Randy and the last name of Sire. And if we let this rip, lo and behold, Randy was assistant engineer from 86 to 94, and then she was promoted to full engineer, and she's been that sent from 94 to the current time because there is no to date here. Okay, so there's Randy's history. Let's talk about nested select statements. Nested select statements involve, as you might guess, nesting one select statement inside of another. And it's a very nifty thing to be able to do. So I think an example will make this clear. So same query. We're interested in 
the title and the from date and the to date. Nothing changed there. That's the information we need. Where do we need it from? Well, we need it from the title table. And let's say slightly different where. Where employee number, which is in the title table. Title table has as a foreign key employee number, so we can reference employee number. What requires us to do something fancy, either a join or a nested select, is the fact that title does not contain information about first and last name. So we're going to say where the employee number equals, and then we're just going to start an entirely new query. We're going to separate it by parenthesis. Let's start a new line. Parenthesis, select employee number from employee where, and you guessed it, this is where we specify Randy Sire, where last name is equal to Sire, and first name is equal to Randy. And close the parenthesis, add the semicolon, and what the SQL interpreter will do is take this inner query, the one in the parenthesis, parse it, evaluate it, and replace the results, replace the query itself with its results. So it will, what's highlighted here will be replaced with the result of this query, and then it will back out of the parenthesis and run this query. So if we knew that, you know, Randy Sire were employee number 62, we would evaluate this query, which just returns Randy Sire's employee number, and then we would put its results, let's say for the sake of argument, 62, and then the query would become the outer query, select title, from date, to date, from title, where employee number equals 62. And let's see if that works. And sure enough, it does. That is the nested select query alternative to join. May work for you, it may not. I think many students develop a preference. They prefer join related approaches to SQL solutions. Others prefer nested select statement solutions. Occasionally, it is necessary to use a nested select as a practical matter. When you are dealing with queries that involve the biggest or the smallest uh, of something in a particular way, uh, which is actually the topic of this week where we're dealing with aggregated queries where we're trying to describe the overall set of data rather than individual atomic records within those sets of data. Um, when you're not sure if there's just going to be, whoops, if you, there's just going to be one result or multiple results, and you'll see that in this week's homework, it may be useful for you to nested select your way out of that particular dilemma. And that is a useful hint for the bonus question in this week's homework. Okay, with that, uh, study hard, enjoy uh, nested selects if they're your thing, uh, try to understand them either way, and I will see you online.